Every day, we hear about the need to adopt sustainable practices to ensure a future for the next generations and protect the planet. But why is it important to manage the planet's resources in a sustainable way? Good agricultural practices, the correct management of woodlands and water resources and the fight against air pollution play a crucial role in protecting habitats and biodiversity and ensuring the preservation of landscapes and the environment in which we live. We absolutely must protect the ecosystem because only in this way will guarantee for our communities biodiversity of habitats and species, mitigation of climate change and the protection against natural hazards such as landslides, forest fires and windstorms, supply of healthy food and the provision of wood for construction and energy beauty and recreational value of landscapes, and many other services known as ecosystem services, meaning all the benefits that people derive from nature. That's easy for you, but for us humans, it's a little more complicated. Adopting sustainable practices is often expensive and not everyone can afford it. Think, for example, of a farmer who, in order to live from their harvest, has to guarantee a certain production and is therefore forced to use pesticides and chemical fertilizers. Then there are those who are forced to abandon their land because costs exceed profits. How can you ask them to sacrifice their own well-being and that of their families in the name of the planet's health? I know it's not easy to find a balance, because the main economic growth models are not compatible with the sustainable management of resources. That's why we need to develop new economic schemes capable of preserving the environment while ensuring people's livelihoods, sharing best practices and collaborative strategies for solving environmental problems, promoting projects that address the new environmental needs of communities, strengthening the role of social economy in favour of a green transition, contributing to rural development and the conservation of natural ecosystems, and improving natural resource management in all territories. I really don't know how to do that. Have you ever heard of PES? PES stands for Payment for Ecosystem Services. PES bring ecosystem services into the market by having the beneficiaries of an environmental service, buyers like businesses and governments, pay the owners of the resource, sellers like farmland owners, to ensure the permanence or improvement of a particular ecosystem service. For example, a beverage company may pay farmers to reduce their use of chemical pesticides instead of paying higher rates for the water treatment plants. It's a win-win situation. You mean that pests promote sustainable management of natural resources while ensuring the livelihoods of the communities that manage them? Exactly. Pests fairly value good practices in natural resources management and transform rural areas into the real heroes of green economy. So, the role of local authorities in promoting and regulating pests is fundamental. That's right, but there's even more. Local authorities can represent the communities that benefit from ecosystem services by entering into an agreement with the sellers of the service as buyers themselves. Then, round tables should be set up in the territories so that pest projects can be promoted between farmers, cooperatives, associations, artisan businesses, traders, factories public bodies and private citizens. That's why GECO, the Green Social Economy of Ecosystem Services Payment, was born, a project to promote the role of social economy linked to ecosystem services payments in Europe. So we actually agree on this. Yes, coming to an agreement is not that difficult after all. <laughs>